Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. On this day, the 14th day of April, in the year 1892, we welcome with pride our esteemed town leaders to these hallowed halls for a matter of great importance and historic significance as we gather together to witness a proclamation that will change the course of history in this beautiful land we call our home. But first, let us join together in song to recognize and to pay honor to she who has made this possible. I invite everyone to join me in the singing of God Save the Queen. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. I've just done that part. <laughs> Sorry. On this day, the 14th day. And that part. <laughs> we welcome with pride our esteemed. Yes, yes, that too. The queen. She who. The what? That's right. The queen. You mean she who has made all of this possible? Would you please let me get through this? My apologies. <laughs> she who has made all of this possible. Well now, I've just said that part, haven't I? <laughs> all right, fine. Her Majesty Queen Victoria. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. privilege to welcome our esteemed town leaders here tonight. I ask that you each state your name for the official record before claiming your seats. We begin your worship. Alderman Atticus Andrew Dilkins II, standing in for Mayor <clears throat> Oscar Fleming, who was unable to be with us tonight because he was unfortunately involved in a golf accident at the Windsor Police Charity Golf Tournament. <laughs> Alderman Friedrich Francis the First. Alderman Edgard Clayman the First. Alderman Alberto Mara the First. Alderman Paolo Borelli. Alderman the first. Antonin Kuzmierczak the First. Alderman Taylor Elliott the First. Alderman Olivier Holt the First. And I am Alderman Hilary Payne. At 19 years of age, I am the youngest alderman ever to have served this great city. It is my honor, it is my hope to still be serving this community well into the future, even 125 years into the future. But I am a wee bit older 
than I am now. Yeah, we get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're young. young. You're young. I call this meeting to order. Tonight we will hear from the following delegation. A group calling themselves the Women of Windsor. Deputy Constable Ichabod Vincente Power I and entrepreneur and business magnate, Sir Hiram Walker. If all delegates are present, please say aye. 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 First up, the women of Windsor. Who speaks for you? I do. And who may I ask are you? My name is Madame Joanna Genia, and I speak for the powerful women with voices. There has been much discussion lately about progress, about this town of ours becoming something bigger, something greater, a city, a city where every voice counts. Everyone has a story to tell and where every voice matters. We come before you tonight, us women of Windsor, to request, no, to insist sir, that our voices be heard. We demand that we be given the right to vote in what will be, after tonight, the newly incorporated city of Windsor. Wow. Wow. You all just stole my thunder. That was like my big announcement tonight, to announce that we're going to become a city. Oh. I doubt. We already knew what we were here for. I want to hear what Madame Johanna has to say, and I doubt any of you will have a problem with that. So now. <laughs> On what ground do you argue such a thing? If the, if the system isn't broken, why worry about it? Why bother fixing the system? The Ontario Legislature has passed with a one vote majority a new bill allowing women to study and practice law in this province. <laughs> Although I don't know why any of us would want to. Hi George, you have a point, I assume? Our point is, it is ludicrous for our province to say women have a right to practice law. While our soon-to-be city, we don't have the right to vote on the law we're now allowed to practice. I lies, doublespeak, fire and brimstone. Shame! They All want to confuse us! Let her speak, old man! <laughs> She's talking to you, old Romero. I'm only 19. <laughs> Please finish, Madam Yugan, Johanna. Women in this country deserve to have a say in our present and in our future. We deserve to have a say in how our cities are run. Poppycock. And if Windsor is to become a city, sir, it should recognize everything women are capable of. Women have been powerful leaders around the world for a very long time. Like who? Cleopatra! Don of Arc! <laughs> Theodora! Queen the Great? Queen Elizabeth! Queen Victor! Me! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if I live to serve this city when it is 125 years old. May you do so with a woman sitting by, sir. All right, all right, I think we've heard enough. No, no, no we, we won't, won't go. go. No, 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 we won't go. No, no, well, no one said you had to go anywhere, ladies. <laughs> but at, you know, certainly at, uh, as to your request, it's not for us to decide here tonight but know that we have heard your voices loud and clear. And we will continue to fight for our voices to be heard loud and clear at the highest court in the land, even if it takes 24 more years. And as well you should, but for now, we must move on. Deputy Constable Ichabod Vincente Power, the floor is yours, sir. Sir, thank you, Alderman Pilkins. To the Alderman, 
esteemed colleagues, Royal Majesty, special guests here, even the women. <laughs> I'm here tonight on behalf of Chief Constable Alberto Frederick. He was involved in an unfortunate altercation with the Mayor Fleming at our charity golf tournament. With Mayor Fleming at our charity golf tournament, as you know, uh, this being the 1892 Winter Police Service proudly celebrates the 25 year service of the community. The community is the eyes and ears of the police. It's been the case for the past 25 years and I hope it will be in the future. This community puts its faith in us to protect it and we in turn are proud to have the privilege to serve. I'm here tonight to ask you to designate May each year to be the anniversary month for the Winter Police Service. All in favor say aye. 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 Shame, shame I say. <laughs> Madam Johanna, only aldermen are able to vote. For now, aldermen. <laughs> aldermen, I also offer our full cooperation and our partnership from the town of Windsor tonight, region the historic act of incorporation to officially become the city of? Hey, hold on a second, that's my line. Oh, it comes <laughs> later. Very well. Our congratulations to the Windsor Police Service as they celebrate their milestone 25th anniversary this year. Here, here. And let me just say that should I be lucky enough to serve this community during the year of your 150th anniversary. May you do so with a woman sitting by, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Constable Power. And now I give the floor to Mr. Hiram Walker. Thank you, Alderman Dick Dilkins, esteemed Alderman, Madam Johanna. I come before you tonight, a very humble, simple businessman who asks so very little. Simple, sir, you are anything but simple. I would like to remind everyone that this delegate is one of the most significant contributors and the head of a family with a name that is deeply entrenched in our community, touching on aspects of architecture, of history, of industry, and of course, of great neighborhoods. Really, really great neighborhoods. Yes. <laughs> this man is a true industrialist who built his distillery, Harm Walker and Sons Limited, on the Windsor banks of the Detroit River, created the world famous Canadian Club Whiskey, and is a very charitable man and who has donated money across our community and in nearby Detroit. His worship and the aldermen are too kind, true. I did purchase 468 acres of land and relocate my Detroit whiskey operation. Who's up? Who's up? Who's up? <laughs> true, my investment built a flour mill, a distillery and a hog farm. And after only 12 years of barreling whiskey, mine has become the biggest operation of its kind in the new Confederation of Canada. You provided amenities lacking in many large urban centers for the people of Walkerville, including streetlights, well-paved and drained streets, a water pumping station, bicycle racks, running water, <laughs> and a police force. And a fire department. And a fire department. Sir, you built a model community in Walkerville, an unparalleled Canadian community due to its high standards of urban design and the quality of architecture, and which has a quality of life that inspires in its residents a sense of fierce loyalty and pride. And I hope one day, sir, to be able to amalgamate that municipality. We <laughs> <laughs> uh, declare your increasingly popular Canadian club is the first Canadian brand to be marketed worldwide. And even now, sir, you are hard at work and you have construction ongoing of a model railway that will be the best local railway in all of Canada. And you have done this. All of this. All of this at your own expense. Who's Railroads! Neighborhoods! Whiskey! While ensuring each of you have a sample of my product before you this very night. Who's Now tell us, Mr. Walker, what would you like of us this evening? As I said, I am a humble man, as man, and as such, all I ask is that you erect a larger-than-life statue made, made of bronze that captures my likeness as, and is all on display for all of eternity. Sir, 
a truly brilliant idea. An artistic idea? Madam Johanna, what say you? I wonder how such a work might look and how possible it will be to truly capture this man's essence. <laughs> I say, who in the name of Pope Leo the Thirteenth are you, and what are you doing here? My name is Pam Morse, and I have come from the future, from the year 2017, a time when women had strong voices, stellar style, great shoes, drove their own cars, and did have the right to vote. I told you, sisters, it was only a matter of time. More importantly, what is a pretty lady like you doing for dinner tonight? <laughs> I am the great great granddaughter of Hiram Walker. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> Those clothes! Those shoes! How extraordinary! Thank you. I have come from the future to bring you this beautiful and artistic sketch by a talented artist from my time. It will take until the year 2017 from the city. That, that's my line. City of Windsor, listen to how that rolls off the tongue. I like it. <laughs> it will take then for the city of Windsor council to recognize my great great grandfather's legacy with a statue. What a shame that is. A true travesty. Whatever can we do to alter the course of this history? You could take the sketch and have somebody work on it. Santa Maria, this woman has a great idea. Good grief. <laughs> you, great, great, granddaddy of the future, leave the sketch. <laughs> yes, yes, leave it and go. <laughs> Shall I stand down the meeting? <laughs> Just stay tall. <laughs> oh, okay. Here, take these. Oh, Tell me something before you go. Our family loves you, great great grandfather, Hiram. Oh well, that's nice, but you've made us all very proud. Oh well, that's that's good, but the Walkerville of 2017 is thriving. Wonderful, but yes, great great grandfather. The whiskey, my whiskey. Yes, it's absolutely the best in the world. It was wonderful to see all of you. No. No. It can't be. Are you? The name is Payne. Alderman Payne. Now that's dedication. <laughs> <laughs> There you have it, a larger than life bronze statue in your in, statue in, in to, to honor. Oh, jeez. Oh, I've ruined it. I've ruined it. I've ruined it. Do we have money for an artist to recreate what we saw here? Not now. Heck, not for another 125 years. All in favor of tabling the statue's commission for 125 years, say aye. 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 Recorded vote. <laughs> <laughs> And now, before we turn our attention to the great historic item that brings us here tonight, I will take a moment to allow for any new business from the Aldermans. Alderman Payne. She recognized me. That future woman recognized me. She said I was dedicated. She called me counselor. Can I have a statue on a roundabout 125 years in the future? Uh, no. Alderman Francis? I would like the Alderman to know that my family was recently visited by a fortune teller who spoke of a future son, strong, charismatic, and good looking, and declared the town of Windsor will indeed become a true city that... Hey, 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 hey. Sorry, hey. your thunder, your thunder, my apologies. Getting used to it. Alderman Sleeman. Pass. <laughs> Alderman Mara. Pass. Alderman Kuzmercha. I would like my Alderman colleagues to know that I have recently begun considering the future and how important new technology will be. 
I am proposing that the newly formed city of Windsor. All right. All right, that's it. My, that's apolo it. my apologies, Alderman. My apologies. I am proposing that this we consider finding a way for each citizen who calls Windsor home to be able to share special moments in their lives publicly, to express their opinions freely, without censorship, to take part in a great social experiment that will unite us all. Really? What would you call such a thing? I call it the Book of Faces. Oh. And I envision it placed in our great town hall. Soon to be City Hall. Unbelievable. <laughs> so that everyone would have their own page in this Faces book to highlight their key moments yes. in their lives? Yes. And maybe we even include a photograph of each person. And everyone just blabs their opinions all the time. <laughs> writing whatever comes to mind. And <laughs> chirping and chirping. And tweeting. And tweeting. And tweeting all day, every day. I don't want to trump this, but this sounds horrible. <laughs> all those aldermen in favor, say aye. Aye. All, set, all opposed, say, alderman, you crazy. All oh, the man, you crazy. <laughs> Proposal denied. Now we're worried. Yes, uh, Alderman Borelli. Uh, pass. Alderman Holt. Uh, pass. Alderman Elliott. Tonight I ask everyone to consider how forward thinking the new city of Windsor will be. I give up. I'm going to pull my hair out for a minute. <laughs> black, black volunteers fought in Upper Canada in the War of 1812. Canada had a reputation as a safe haven during the war. Tens of thousands of African Americans sought, sought refuge. From 1815 to 1865, they came using the Underground Railroad. In 1834, slavery was abolished in Canada. In 1850, Henry Bibb, a rebellious slave, escaped to Detroit. He spoke against slavery. He moved to Windsor. He founded the Voice of the Fugitive. He reported on the Underground Railroad and colonization. In 1857, William Nelson Hall was the first black man and the first Canadian naval recipient to be awarded the Victoria Cross. In 1866, Mifflin Gibbs became the first black politician in Canada. We are alive during a time of great change. We can have a voice in that change. Tonight, I come before you to ask that we think about how some of the moments I've mentioned help shape our world. I ask that we consider the sort of forward-thinking community our city of Windsor will be. We start with what might seem like a small step. Alderman, let's remove the term colored from the census. Let's respect our similarities and celebrate our differences while insisting on fair, <coughs> equal treatment for everyone. If we start doing that now, then before we know it, we just might find ourselves living in a community that's the most diverse community in Canada, with women voting. Well, at least uh, the third or fourth most diverse. What would you all think of that? I think that's exactly, Councillor Alderman, the type of place we all want the city of Windsor to be. For everyone. For, For everyone. 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 Alderman Elliott, we will definitely look into your request for the census. Thank you, Madam Johanna. She's not an alderman. You don't have to ask her, do you? Well, I, I feel like I do. <laughs> Who's up? Who's up? Pass. Who's and up? thank you, Alderman Dokin. Well, that brings us to the real reason we're all here tonight. And as many of you know, Mayor Fleming, on behalf of our town, recently petitioned the Legislative Assembly of the Province of Ontario to incorporate the City of Windsor. And I'm pleased to share the following with all of you tonight. Whereas the corporation of the town of Windsor have made their petition represented that the said town now contains over 10,000 inhabitants and that the population is rapidly increasing, 
and by reason of such increase and its extensive railway interests and facilities and its mercantile and shipping trade is now and will continue to be an important center of population and commerce. And whereas that said corporation has prayed that the said town may be erected into a city to be called the city of Windsor. And whereas it is expedient to grant the prayer of the said petition, therefore Her Majesty by and with the advice and consent of the Legislative Assembly of the Province of Ontario and acts as follows. On and after the passing of this act, the said town of Windsor shall be and is hereby incorporated as a city and shall be known thereafter as the corporation of the city of Windsor. And as such shall enjoy and possess all the rights, powers and privileges of cities under the municipal act. What say your Royal Majesty? Is the town of Windsor now and forever after the corporation of the city of Windsor? To borrow a phrase, Huzzah! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I propose that every year during the month of May, the city of Windsor shall mark this birthday of sorts, this anniversary of our incorporation as a city with a community celebration. I'd like to thank all the aldermen, on behalf of all of the aldermen, thank you to Her Royal Majesty Queen Victoria, to all the aldermen present tonight, to the women of Windsor, the women of Windsor and all of our delegates to the great, great grand baby of the future and to our friends here from the press. Happy birthday to the city of Windsor. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to the city, city of Windsor. Windsor. And before I make and ask for a motion to adjourn, I'd like to ask Her Royal Highness if she has anything <coughs> to say. Oh, delighted. I want to thank you for asking me to join you this evening. It's been a royal pleasure. And I also want to say a thank you to the generations of theater people since the time of the most respected bar, William Shakespeare. And I also want to thank two of our royal theater companies, the Windsor Light Music Theater and Corda Productions for dressing Her Majesty this evening and also helping to dress the audience and the respected older men. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Your Majesty. Mm. Is there a motion to adjourn? Your Worship, so moved. Seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.